Oh my god, bro, it's like sludge. Oh my god, it's- Oh no, oh no! Oh, First time on the lift ever! Definitely not its last. Hi, I'm Shay Lisi, and welcome back to my channel. I am here with my shuffle head. I can say that now. We are doing a basic check on it just to make sure that it has all of the fluids changed, just a peek at all the things that when you buy a new motorcycle, you should look at. Thankfully, it's in pretty good condition. I only bought it for $3,000. A lot needs to be done to it to make it the motorcycle that I want it to be, but as far as quality goes, I stole this motorcycle. Apparently, shovel heads take a very special kind of oil, not regular Harley oil, and even Harleys take a special kind of oil, so this takes a super special kind of oil. Not quite as much as I thought, though, because I just have always put 50 weight in shovel heads, but Brian at the Ride Factory said since it has Dalcron cases and it's got all this updated parts on it, it's got, I don't know if they're STD heads or SNS heads. We'll still put some 50 weight in it, but we'll mix that with 20W50. You know, with these new cases and some of the other stuff on this bike, it has been brought into the 21st century. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of key components on this bike. You have three separate oils. Are you fucking serious? Oil three. Yes, three separate oils on this bike. No! So, dude. let's see, I know it's a lot to keep track of. You gotta keep track of all of them. Things? You gotta keep track That's of three of them. So, you have the engine oil, which you see that chrome thing right there? You know that from your sports shirt. That's where the engine oil is. On an original shovel head, it would have an oil filter in that tank. This is an aftermarket tank. That's not what they would have come with. And it does not have an interior oil filter. So, on this bike, there is actually, and it's a lot easier and a lot better. It does have an exterior oil filter, which you can see over here. Oh, it's dripping. A lot? Yeah, gas. It's a lot of gas. Yeah, we should probably turn the gas off. The floats are probably stuck. That's why it leaks gas like that. Yeah, it could be something else, but it's probably the float bowls just being stuck. We can pull it off and take a look at it later. This tank does have some rust in it, so it's not out of the question that some nasty stuff got in there and, and stuck a couple things open. That's your engine oil. You also have your transmission oil, which is kept in the transmission of all places. Okay, that makes sense. Does make sense, all right. Let's go back to the other side for the third and final oil, which is your primary oil, which is kept in the primary, which is this guy right here. So this primary oil, it lubricates the clutch, lubricates the primary chain. It has all the spinny discs in it, right? Exactly. So there's a gear on the end of the engine here that spins and it's connected with a chain to the clutch, which is right here. That's why they call it the primary chain. It's your primary drive chain. So that drives I the engine that. to this, and that you can release with the clutch, which then transfers it to the transmission, which is how you how you change gears, which the transmission then transmits that to the final drive chain. Bro, I'm stressed. Well, I knew the primary oil was just the start of the disaster of the Green Goblin. Going in there, <laughs> I'm so scared. Well, we're not gonna pull it off. We're just gonna drain it. There's just a drain plug okay, on it. Okay, thank God. <laughs> and the Sportster is actually a unit construction. That means that the engine oil and the transmission oil are all in the same place. Got it. So this is not and a unit construction. Again? That's a unit motorcycle. I need a notepad, bro. Yeah, this is a, what would- Unit motorcycle? A unit, because it's all one big piece. It's all it's one unit. It's an absolute unit. That's a unit motorcycle too. You see how there's just one piece? The transmission, the primary, everything is inside that. This is completely separate from the engine. It's uh, connected by the chain, obviously. Divorce primary and a divorce transmission are very uncommon in modern motorcycles. Almost nobody does it. It's really uncommon, but you can see the engine block here, and you see where that connects right there. That's where the primary connects. Now let's go back over to the other side. We can look at where the transmission connects. And you can see in there that the transmission is separate from that and doesn't even touch the engine. You see, it's bolted in there, but the only thing that connects this transmission and that engine is your primary. And they do not share an oil. Here. So you see here, that'll this be your- like literally on it. Yeah, that's on it. It's all part of it. And you see that? That's part, that's the transmission. So if you look through there, you see how that's all one piece on the bottom? Yeah. That's where yeah, your that primary would be, and see that's where the pulley is. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. We'll go look, watch some videos later, and uh, maybe we can share some with the audience for people who are a little confused on this. I don't want anyone to feel bad, by the way. I'm always confused, and that's why I always ask for further explanation if I am confused, because I'm not gonna just sit there and be like, yeah, I understand. If I don't, I'm gonna be like, no, dude, that just sounded like a bunch of nonsense to me. Yeah, no, Start always from ask. From the beginning, I don't even know what a primary is. <laughs> <laughs> always ask, and it's not a bad thing to ask, and it's not bad to not know. You know, I learned all this stuff over years of working on motorcycles, and I was a mechanic, and for me, I look at it, and it's kind of second nature, whereas someone who doesn't just 
Bruce has never looked inside an engine or pulled it apart, there's no shame in not knowing how it works. And I think it's definitely like a dude thing, like where a dude's like, oh, I'm not gonna, I, I, I gotta know how much. It's like, dude, you don't have to know, trust me. There's plenty of shit I don't know. I don't know shit about if I wanna learn. We're gonna start by changing all the fluids. The Sportster was the around bike. This is the find out bike. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, let's drain the engine oil. On this, it's really easy compared to some other bikes. It's just that plug right there. Go ahead and zip that out. <laughs> There's a lot of things on this bike that were made for motorcycles to be able to work it on the side of the road. Even the inclusion of Allens. Well, there's a reason for that, and that's specifically a Harley thing, and Harley still uses them, and some other bikes do too, like that has Allen heads there. Yeah. But then you see your Kawasaki doesn't. A lot, of, a lot of modern bikes don't use Allen heads all over the bike like a Harley Davidson does. The reason for that is that you can pack the tools flat. Oh, that makes sense. So it's a lot easier to have a lot of different sizes yeah. of tools with you in a smaller space if they're Allens. I like bike. Yeah, and you know, normally Allens are made to turn already, so you don't have to have a socket. They have that bend in them, the hand Allens, that uh, that are already ready to turn this. So yeah, a lot of it's designed to be able to work on it on the side of the road, and a lot of people would make fun of that, but at the end of the day, when you are working on the side of the road, you're glad they designed some of it this way. So the oil's really easy to get to. You don't have to get underneath the bike. That's a good thing. All right, quick break to keep the nice bikes out of the rain, because <laughs> it just started Wait, pouring. Oh, shit. God damn it. Yeah, my Sportster's a nice bike, okay? It deserves to be out of the rain. No, I don't want it in the rain either. I'm gonna need a wrench. First thing you always do is take the oil cap off the other side. The other side? Yeah, the fill cap. This one? Yes, take that off so it can actually drain or it won't drain properly. Right, the wrench. I need an even bigger wrench. The okay. biggest wrench. Might even be bigger. Nope, that's it. Wow. Not feeling like it wants to move. So, we have a breaker bar now. What? Yeah. You mean a VVC pipe? No, we have a real breaker bar now. Use the power. Wow, this is the power? <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to hold it underneath there. You're just gonna break it loose with that. You're not gonna take it all the way off. Yeah, keep it steady. There you go. Power! Yeah! All right, now you can take it off with whatever you want. With whatever I want? Whatever you want. Okay, not my fingers. With your teeth if you want. Let's try not to drop that drain plug into the oil. See what I'm doing? I put my thumb underneath it. See? It's a learning computer, a neural net processor. Oh my god, bro, it's like sludge. Oh my god. It's oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh shit, shake, shake, shake. A little too thick for our funnel here. Harley oil is thick. Well, old Harley oil. New Harley's just take the same oil as other motorcycles. Well, there's your first, uh, your first disaster. Is that a disaster? How many rags do you think that's gonna take to clean up? One good rag. One rag? You're on here. <laughs> oh no, it's leaking on the floor now. Oh how? Where did it come from? Where's the holes? Just the one rag, huh? Now it's all under my tire. Oh no. Oh no. The lift is so lubricated. Why is Damn. it green? Because it's not old, so that tells us that the oil is not that old. Because it's not jet black. But it's still a good idea to change it because you want to know what's in there. We don't know what's in there. This is a job for gloves. How do I put a glove on a cat? All right, crisis averted. Although we're really gonna need to clean that rear tire off. Now let's do some sick burnouts. Yeah, and there is a torque spec on that. It's 18 foot pounds. All right, use your calibrated elbow for 18 foot pounds. This one's uncalibrated. <laughs> yeah, but currently achieving calibration on that one. I miss Shelby's automatic on rear. Yeah, we gotta get one of those, which is expensive. Let's go ahead and drain the primary fluid. Spooky, scary. Careful, careful, <laughs> careful! Where do we take this? To the auto parts store. I thought you were gonna say the beach and dump it in the ocean. <laughs> oh, used oil? Exactly. We want all those freaking dolphins to get a good suntan, man. <laughs> Glistening in the sun. Working on my base layer. Summer's coming, all right, baby? Think of how fast they'll go, covered in oil. And there'll be all those pretty rainbow colors. What's that? The rag tag. So there should be just a drain plug underneath this. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and check it because I actually don't know if this, it might have a dry primary in it. Some shovel heads do, since this is just basically assembled from parts, we have no idea. Well, we'll be able to tell with that off because if it's not a dry primary, it will be filled with oil. Well, thanks for mentioning that now. No, the oil the oil levels would do not go above that. You might leak oil out of that if you took it off when it was on the kickstand, but when it's straight up and down, it should be underneath that for a proper oil level. If it's an oil primary. And it is a dry primary. So that's one less we have to change. Cool. Make sure that it's not just out of fluid. 
Oh my god, that'd be scary. That would be bad. Nope, it's got a belt. You see the belt in there? Yeah. So that has a belt-driven primary. No oil. Which means you could literally just take the primary cover off and run it just open with no primary cover. You don't even have to put that back on. It doesn't have to be on there. That's one fluid we don't have to change. Bonus. Let's move over to the other side. Change the transmission fluid. Okay, okay. You see a drain plug on the bottom? Yeah, I think I see it. What size? Large. Large? Large and in charge. I think it's another three-quarter inch? Probably, yeah. Is that the right size? Yep. Hey, imagine that. Another good thing that Harley usually does is most of the stuff is the same size, so you don't have to carry as many tools. It is in a little bit of an awkward position down there, so it might be hard to break loose. So why don't you give it a little? Okay. And just break it loose too, because we're gonna wanna get the oil pan underneath it before you. Let's see if we can make another mess. You said you wanted to create a problem. Well, here you go. You reach it, you got your clever little fingers in there. That's, you know, once you realize that you're the problem, they say everyone's the hero in their own story, but we're the villains in our own story. We're just nothing but good-hearted villains and dangerous women. I hope this is the right bolt. Oh yeah, I didn't even look. I hope it is too. I didn't even check to see if it's right. Is there uh, fluid coming out now that it's been removed? Yes. What color is it? Suspicious. Suspicious? <laughs> Is it red? Yellowish green? Well, let me look at it. Make sure you didn't pull out an engine bolt and you actually pulled out the transmission bolt. I believe that's the transmission bolt though. And it's not covered in uh, metal flakes. That's a good thing. Further uncovering even more nice parts on this bike. <laughs> you stole it. It's got a crane electronic ignition on it. Now, some guys are just like points fanatics and they want them to have points, but personally, I'm an electronic ignition guy. It just provides a way hotter spark. Easier to kickstart, easier to start in general. It just runs a lot better. But if they do go out, then you ain't fixing it on the side of the road like points. But you got a nice one in there. It's a nice crane ignition. Like I said, SNS carb. So every part on this bike, it's got their, they're either STD or SNS heads. I'm not really sure. They're not Harley heads. And then of course it's got Delcron cases. So really when you imagine this bike, there's very few parts of this bike that are actually originally Harley. Like I imagine the transmission, primary cover, a couple things here and there. Other than that, I'm sure if it, it's got that crane ignition on it, it's probably got a hot cam in it too. They were trying to give me a hard time saying I'm freaking telling you what to do in your vids. Wasn't here making sure you filmed when you're working on bikes, there wouldn't be no vids. You freaking just start doing it, you don't film anything. No, I forget, of course, I'm just so excited to do stuff. I'm just like, let's just do. Banned on Instagram, ignition covers over here. Too hot for Instagram with your metric Allen, silly. I don't think they're long enough. I need to make these thinner. Definitely probably be easier to get longer bolts. All oh, the cursing, Shay. You know, no cursing on this Christian channel. What would Weems think? If I did it off camera. <laughs> Fair enough. We do the opposite of what most people do. Most people are just like goody two shoes on camera. And then when the camera turns off, they're bad. We're bad on camera. And then when the camera turns off, we're nice. Don't ever film us doing something nice. That's not our style. We don't want peace. We want only problems, always. I don't want peace. I want problems, always. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Okay. Alrighty. No clean. Only problems. We have a better funnel. This funnel has a wider fun. That's not the O, oh, that's the fun part. That's a lot bigger. That should be able to handle some 50 weight. <laughs> Okay, for this, you want that oil to be about an inch below the filler net. Why is it all leaking out the other side? Got him. <laughs> <laughs> That's some dummy shit I would do is not for the not, I've done, just don't feel bad, I've done it before. Anybody who's a tech, who's been in tech for a long time, they've done it at least once. Oh shoot, you know what we forgot to do? Change the oil filter. Doing this should not affect that because the engine's not running. Sauce. The forbidden syrup. This looks like honey. Yeah, no, it's the thick stuff. And now that will leak out fluid as well. Do we do the same thing we did on Madam Hex's friend bike and just like take a hammer and bang it off? We're, let's not do that one. Or do we have a special tool? Yeah, you're gonna take those big ass pliers right there off the wall. That's what you're gonna use to twist it off. Big ass pliers. Yeah, the big ass, the biggest ones. So this is not a special tool. Uh, yeah, it's a special tool. Look how big it is. Well, no, you don't want them like that. No. No, 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 no. no. Go ahead and pull that off right now. You're gonna leak oil everywhere. Oh, I mean, I can just let you make the mistake if you want. That's what the internet wants. They're like, stop telling her what to do. Stop controlling everything she does. I'm teaching her how to work on the bike. What do you want? We're also going to want something for that. If you slide down, otherwise it's gonna be all over the exhaust pipe. It looks like someone's already done that. It looks, yeah, it looks like whoever did it before just let it go on the exhaust pipe. Should I just let it go on the exhaust pipe? No, let's avoid that. Okay. <laughs> I remember I need to put a bunch of oil in this or some oil in this. 
it? Yes, it's always a good idea to put oil in that. Uh, you can wait till we're about to screw it on. Shape that in such a way that it makes the oil not hit the exhaust pipe. You're gonna have to use your brain to shape it in such a way <laughs> that the oil does not hit the exhaust pipe. Make a paper plane. <laughs> <laughs> Fly away to the moon. See if it's made of green cheese. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I have an idea, shut up. I'm using my brain in such a way that the oil <laughs> does not hit the exhaust pipe. Ooh, look at you go. It's a tool using primate. That should, well, there's only one way to find out. Spin that oil filter off. Now you're really gonna have to squeeze that tight. You're also gonna wanna spin it uh, left instead of right. That would make sense. <laughs> Suspenseful music is playing in my brain. All right, very carefully on this. Bang! <laughs> on this last part. Carefully, carefully. I'll probably use my hand at this point. You could probably use your hand. <laughs> your hand is also a tool. Let's see if your little oil slide worked. It's like a fun little slide for the oil. Whee! How, how many threads are on this thing? Whee! Oh, it worked! Look at you go! You did it! Good job. A lot of people probably will say you don't need to do this. It does definitely doesn't hurt anything to do it. Pour a little oil in there is not a bad idea. Good job, look at you, you kept all the oil off the exhaust. You did a better job than whoever did it before you. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? To know that you did it the right way. Now here's the thing about oil filters. They usually just go on hand tight, but since you've got one broken hand, well, I will tighten it the rest of the way for you. What's your tool though? You don't want to save it? Maybe hang it on the wall. You don't want to put a magnet on it in the refrigerator? I'm so proud of you. Abstract art. Now these drag pipes just make this an absolute bitch to get to, to fill it. But there's two things you want to do here. Well, actually, yeah, let's finish filling our engine oil, actually, or we forget to do that. ADHDS. I know, dude. Together, with our powers combined, we will forget to do everything. So why don't you just go ahead, after you put that in, just go ahead and take a peek in there. Just use a lighter to see inside it. <laughs> How are we looking? Put some more. 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 Now the lighter. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this transmission plug out. These pipes don't make it easy. Should we take the pipes off? <laughs> Let's try to avoid that one. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like it just takes a big screwdriver. Yeah. So yeah, I hate this exhaust pipe. I'm gonna be 100% yeah, honest. They sound cool, but they look terrible. Yeah, that won't actually come out. That's how dumb this exhaust pipe is. We're just gonna Because it won't be able to lift out. Yeah, it can't screw out. We'll take this out, which is, that's how you check it. And then we'll inject it in there with the uh, with the hypodermic needle. <laughs> I'm like, it's not weird. This is really common. There's some things that just need to be filled this way, but we're gonna fill it. We're not gonna leave it. So normally you would pull this, that out, and then you know it's full when you're filling it up top because it starts to leak out of that. Okay. That's how you know it's full. We can also put oil in there. We just have to have a small needle, like a, a hypodermic needle and a little piece of tubing. There you go. The forbidden medicine. <laughs> Squirt it in there. Repurposed from Drake's old medicine. Oh. RIP forever angel. Inject it with the juice. Also a turkey baster would have worked. When it starts to drip out, you'll know it's full. Okay. And by the way, I know this seems crazy. Probably a lot of people are like, what do you mean? You just fill it up till it starts to drip out? That's not a weird way to measure fluids. My KTM dirt bike has uh, has a similar method for its engine oil. So there's no dipstick. There's no sight glass on the engine oil on my two stroke. It just has a little thing you pull out and when the oil starts to leak out, it's full. Does it hurt? Straining my wrist. It's getting full? Who knows? Who's to say? Not I. Do you want me to do the rest? I can do it. <laughs> also, this is kind of fun. It is very satisfying, isn't it? Why don't we decorate our pancakes like this? See, it's fun. I actually have a pancake decorator that's like this. You just don't eat pancakes. Oh, yeah, I don't. Another one even. Hungry. Greedy, some would say. How much syrup does this thing want? Greedy guts. Save some for the pancakes. It's grenadine. Mmm, cherry flavored. Remember, always put cherry flavored juice inside your shovel head transmission. <laughs> now be very careful because you might get it confused with strawberry flavored juice. You don't want that. You want the cherry. Don't even get me started on the raspberry. They really need to differentiate these color colors. You see, with like slushies, you get blue raspberry. When they have raspberry flavored juice for your bike, they really should make it blue so we can tell the difference. Watermelon flavor will do in a pinch. How many? No one knows. Take your medicine. What? <laughs> More at once. Not the most efficient way to fill this up, but it is the way that's available to us. Sometimes you just gotta make do. More juice. This is gonna be the tastiest donut ever. All we need now 
is a little bit of powdered sugar. Are you sure this is how we do this? <laughs> no, I'm not sure of anything. <laughs> Oh, 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 look at that, it's full. Now really what we should do, run the engine and then check everything again so the fluids can circulate. So here's another rule for shovel heads and any other rigid mounted Harley. Before you start it up when it's on the lift, you remove all your tools from the lift because it will vibrate them all onto the floor. <laughs> so you funny. don't want anything on here. Oh, here's something you've never had to do because all of your motorcycles have been belt dry. You've never actually had to do chain maintenance because I usually oh. maintain your dirt bike. So this is your first time. I know so, you don't. I did chain maintenance on my dirt bike. Did did you? Yeah. All right, I don't remember. So, since this is uh, this doesn't have a center stand, it's much easier to do chain maintenance while it's up in the air. This chain probably hasn't been maintained by anybody. So this will be its first taste of chain lube. Very nice. Delicious. You don't want to spray it all over the wheel because this stuff is really sticky. So if you get it all over the wheel, it's just gonna look like shit. The bike isn't very clean, so it wouldn't be the end of the world anyway. A lot of times what people do is hold a piece of cardboard. Okay. Now that that's in there, you can, well, you're gonna have to hold it. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Get closer to it. Like that? Yeah, hit it. No, no, you want a steady stream because we want to get the whole thing. There we go. All right, that's probably even too much, but it doesn't matter. But it was fun. Yeah, there you go. It's fun. So what happens is, is this can like fling up. So you definitely want to wipe it off the sprocket where it's like dripping down and yeah. stuff like that. Cause it'll fling up onto you while you're riding the bike around and chain lube is gross. Oh. Definitely don't want chain lube flying all over your back. And somebody's very nicely taken the chain guard off of this. Custom, even though it has a spot for a chain guard, it's got the freaking mounts it for it. I don't know, some people think it looks cooler. And it can if your chain is like gold and really nice, but this chain is yeah. shitty. So it's like why you would want a chain guard, would hide your crappy rusty chain. Let it run for a little bit and then we'll check all the fluids again. All right, go ahead and start it up. We don't have any leaks, which is a good thing. Now let's go ahead and check the oil again. Do you, how you check the oil is you undo that drain plug and if oil comes out, then there's oil in there. <laughs> all right, let's run to the other side. Maybe don't run. Don't run, no running. Not in the danger room. Go ahead, pull that plug, it ain't high yet. Go ahead and take a peek in there. Let me know, are we still at the right level? I can't see. Let's get you light. Where's that freaking torch at? Use that. <laughs> How are we doing in there? Looks pretty much the same to me. Let's take that back in. We good. Now we'll go ahead and pull that plug out again. See if any fluid comes out. If fluid comes out, we fold. We definitely don't want to strip that out. You gotta put your whole body in it. <laughs> All right, be careful when you're pulling it out. It's not very long. And if it starts leaking, you just want to stick it right back in. Okay? That's what she said. <laughs> do we got money shot? Or do we need another injection of juice? Looks like we're good. Stick that sucker back in there. It's full of juice still. Plenty of cherry flavored juice in there. All right, it's... get the powdered sugar. <laughs> We're ready. Donuts are hot, baby. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. Behind me, I've got some really cool resin art that I will not focus the camera on because I don't want to get demonetized. But you can head over to brapstar.com and go to the Shea Lisi store to see some custom epoxy art that I've made. I have some gas caps coming up soon. And I have some custom wood pieces that I've made. I stained myself, routered myself, cut all the pages out of the Playboy magazines, sealed them, then added them to the wood. It's just some really cool wall art that I made. Make sure you head over to bratstar.com to check that out because every single piece that I sell, all that money goes into building my shovel head. I've saved every single dime from every gas cap that I've ever made because I know I've wanted to reinvest it into something with a greater purpose. And that greater purpose is now my shovel head. Initially, I was thinking about buying a lathe, but I have been spending a lot of time with Jared Weems learning how to use a lathe and turns out I'm very bad. So for now, now, please head over to brapstar.com, check out my resin art, and let me know what you think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the ding dong diddle, and do all the things. I'm here for you every Sunday and Wednesday, and every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. Bye! <laughs>